Hey, how's it going, everybody? We are live. Uh, we're about to get started here with round one of Tamari's Killing Floor CD Mentor Tournament. Today, we're going to be having the Philosophers play on Santa's Workshop. This is the CD edit version of the map. So a little bit, uh, or a few tweaks made to the map just to make uh, playing on CD a little bit easier and a little bit more user friendly. I'm going to introduce our casters. Today, we have Tamari and Indy Nick. So Tamari, if you want to introduce yourself first, and then uh, Nick, you can go ahead. Yeah, sure. Hey guys, I'm Tamari. I am the host of the tournament. And yeah, as Dangle said, this is Santa's Workshop. Uh, the team that's going to be playing is the, the Philosophers. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this match. Howdy ho, I'm Mini Nick. I'm the commentator for this match. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do. All right. So, what do you. Oh, you first, Dangles. I was going to say, uh, are they ready to go? Yeah, I think they're ready to go. They're just waiting on us. I just wanted to uh, quickly give a roster rundown real fast and then uh, get a couple opinions from you guys real fast before the match starts here. So All right, sounds good. We do have the Philosophers, which is headed by Mr. Failology himself. He's the team mentor. Uh, he'll be playing Demolitionist. We've got Voodoo Doll, the team's co-mentor, playing Commando this run, it looks like, which is a bit unusual, actually. He normally plays Sharpshooters, so I'm kind of interested in seeing if uh, maybe he's going to switch or actually go through this. Uh, anyway, Kusu playing Berserker, Mernavex playing their Field Medic, Dino playing their Gunslinger, and Kyrum, who will be playing Sharpshooter. So no duplicate perks, it looks like, at all. And uh, I was going to ask, uh, out of curiosity, what you guys, what do you guys think they're going to go for this run? Do you think they're going to try to do any objectives, or do you think they might go for like a Blitz strategy, maybe? I mean, the Blitz strategy sounds like a pretty good uh, situation here, especially since they have a demo, but... Then again, they could be going hard for the objectives because with a Zerk and a demo there, they can really clear out the horde and let the uh, Sharp and Gunslinger deal with the larges very quickly. I mean, the demo could also do that as well, but I think I think they're going to go pretty hard on this. I think they're li or them including a medic is a pretty strong indicator that they're going to probably go for speed and aggression with the objectives since they're already going to be losing points for the uh, medic bonus. So uh, we'll have to see. How um, how the match actually plays out, though. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, and, and I guess I should just take a quick moment to explain to the viewers. Uh, when we're talking about points here, we are talking about the scoring system that's in use in this tournament. And it's a new scoring system that we've created that you can see at the upper right corner of the stream right now. Uh, the teams will be, be, they'll be graded by their performance in the match, and they'll earn a certain number of points. And the goal for this week's match is to maximize this value. And there are... There are various ways that they can earn points. Um, the main main one being just completing the waves themselves. But they also earn additional bonus points for not, things like not dying, uh, doing the objectives if they pop up. Uh, they also earn points for time. So the faster they play, the more points they earn for that. And there's also another... Well, the last bonus is also for playing without a medic. So it looks like they're not going to be going for that last bonus because they do have Murnavex on the medic. But yeah, it, I do agree with what Nick said. I do think that they're going to go for an aggression strategy especially because they have a, a Berserker and a Demo. And I also think, too, that the Berserker and Demo will probably be together, most likely, because that's a pretty good combo, usually. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've really got to say about the pregame. Did you guys have anything else real quick before we tell them that we're good to go? Nope, I'm ready to go. No, nope, right. I can't think of anything. Okay, I just wanted to let them know. All right, so they should be starting up any second here. We should be going live. All right. Let's see how they handle Wave 1 here. Hopefully they're ready to... There are two holds that they could possibly use. I mean, maybe they came up with another one, but the two that I know of, um, it's really just going to depend on which path they take, if they go left or right when they spawn here. All right, so they're starting to ready up now. All right, let's wait for them to spawn in and see see where they head. I'm, I'm actually not, fa I'm not familiar with this map, at least the CD edit version, um, like playing on CD, so I will be kind of interested to see where they hold well the main choice of this edit is we added a lot or tamari added a lot more bookshelves so many bookshelves because <laughs> book we, we, we really <laughs> we really love our uh, reading material here in santa's workshop oh they're going to a spot that the spot that i thought they might go was right above where they just passed so they're actually going to somewhere new oh they're doing this the this is a typical hold i see if you're doing the um the robot uh, round in the actual map itself. Oh yeah, they're gonna use this spot here. Okay, this is actually not bad at all because they, they just have basically two lanes, and 
because this is the CD edit, these uh, a lot of the players that are watching might know that the shoots that are behind them actually will spawn Zeds in the regular game, but they've been disabled in this edit. So it's essentially a two lane hold and they just have to watch these two sides. The only worry would be that when one side gets pushed, it could be kind of hard to initiate a kite. Oh, speaking uh, of which, some pro players here, so. the Zerker side is getting pushed pretty hard, but I think they're able to recover now. Yeah, I think it's due to the fact that uh due to the fact that uh, Fail only has an HX-25, he can't really help the Zerk clear as hard. But those nukes will definitely help. But as soon as uh, Fail gets a, a, a RPG or the uh, Blunderbuss possibly, he is definitely going to just wipe the floor on that line. Absolutely. And like I said too, I, I kind of figured that they were going to have the Zerk and Demo together because it just makes sense. So yeah. They, they both go wonderfully together. They don't have to worry about getting in each other's way or making it hard to get headshots. So overall, really good composition and like good distribution of the players in this hold. The only issue they might run into is if uh, if they have to fall back or kite and they're, uh, they're not able to have that optimal setup with the Demo and Zerker next to each other. But again, I, I think in that case, they'll be they'll be fighting uh, sort of at the end of a wave, and it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I, I'm willing to bet that if they have to kite, they're not going to go to the path of least resistance. I think they're going to go upstairs. Actually, yeah, that's, that could be what they decide to do. They do have a Scrake on the right here, and they have Zed time though, so I think they're probably going to be able to get it down. I'm assuming Voodoo's going to freeze in a second. Or no, sorry, I would say Voodoo. I'm so used to seeing him play sharp. Uh, my apologies, Kyron uh, did throw the freeze like I anticipated, so that scrape will be going down, no problem. And yeah, that's the end of wave one. Pretty straightforward, pretty uh, good, you know, well taken by them. Yeah, I first see them just absolutely wiping the floor with waves one through three. Indeed, yeah, and we, and we know too in in CD, especially in the ASL V3 spawn cycle, which is what this tournament's being ran on, the ramp up happens around wave seven, so we'll we'll be seeing things getting a lot more hectic uh, by that point in time. We do have an objective up now too. It looks like it's the one that's is that in the middle? Oh wow, that objective is kind of yeah. We... It's in the room that they were just at, but it's like a really small little area. I wonder if they're gonna skip it. Let's see where it's at. Like it's are. not the worst spot in the map, but it's definitely not uh, not somewhere I'd want to hold out. Doesn't look like they're gonna go for it. Yeah, they probably just think it's too risky, and I don't really blame that. Actually, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but they actually have fed all of the money to fail, and he's already gotten himself an RPG. <laughs> they're oh, enabling too. him. It's not a bad idea because now that left side is basically good to go against larges now. I wonder if he's just going to let the Zerker clear out the trash and then occasionally shoot rockets, or he's just going to go full ham and just shoot willy-nilly. Yeah, definitely letting the Zerk just do the work, and then it shoot. let's see if he gets that scrape there, though. Yep. Oh, he God. does. Nice. Very nice takedown. One of, my, one of my favorite things is talking about demo and seeing people like, you don't need to donk a Scrake at point-blank range to get the kill. You can do it long range. It just requires a perfect headshot. And sometimes the deviation of the rocket can, you know, screw you up. Yeah, the Zerker, the Zerker side of the map is probably going to be pretty easy this wave just because they do have that RPG that quarter pound is probably not going to last very long. Yep, and... He's knocked over. Yeah, this QP, they should make short work. Yep, there he goes. I got it pretty much just before I could even talk about it. Um, I did want to add that I do think that out of both lanes, the side that Mr. Failology and Kusu are on, the Berserker and Demo, is going to be the more hectic side, mainly because there's a longer sight line on that side. Yep. And in the later waves, they're going to start having more flesh pounds. And of course, flesh pounds seeing you will initiate the rage timer. So. Uh, that's something that I don't think that the right side will have to deal with as much because they have that blind corner. Yeah, but and they also are going to have to deal with Hus snipes as well, uh, or Hus uh, shots launching Zeds at them as well. I get a feeling that the Zerker is probably going to upgrade to a Bone Crusher at some point. Oh, speaking just... of the devil, we got our first Flesh Pound over here. Oh, look at him. Oh, stunned, and that's one RPG. Two RPGs, yeah, he's dead. Work with him. Probably wasn't intentional, but that Destroyer of Worlds, uh, what is it, the gas? Yeah, kind of dude. stumbling that FP around, and it just let Kusu just, just kind of go ham. Because again, he doesn't really have to care about getting, you know, perfect headshots, so. 
He definitely did enough damage to shave off an RPG. It only took him two. Indeed, yeah. This is a really, again, this is a really good, like, this is probably the best uh, best placement of these players, I would say, in their perks. Yep, you have control on one side, and then you have uh, chaos on the other. In perfect balance is all things should be. Oh, this poor Scrag. He doesn't deserve it. Oh, he's just being bullied by the Berserker. That's nice. <laughs> now that wraps up wave two, pretty much. We only got seven Zeds left. Got yeah, there's a flush kind right. of Scrake and yep, yeah. coming on the right-hand side there, but they should be able to... I'm just going to freeze it, I'm assuming. Yep. Yep, and there it goes. Not as much fanfare as a demo rocket, but, you know, just as quick. And then they have the Zed time to finish off that Scrake. And that is pretty much a wrap for wave two. Yeah, another really clean clean wave. I wonder if they're going to just feed the Berserker now. I wouldn't be surprised. They might try to feed somebody on the other side just so uh, so they have a little bit of balance. But again, that side is not nearly is it's not getting pushed nearly as hard as the Berserker flank. Oh, Zerker's got a nail gun. That's going to be real interesting then. Let's see, we oh, yeah, have, they get the Vlad. They got a lot of damage on the left side now. Voodoo has picked and up both the AK the and the SA-50. Or sorry, SA-80. Yeah, and the Met also went ahead and got himself the Hemogoblin, so that's going to be very effective in slowing the larges down and just reducing their damage. So Overall, pretty good weapon picks, I'd say, from, both, uh, from all the players. I'm gonna wonder if they're ever gonna do any of the objectives if they show up. I mean, they could be waiting for one good one. Ooh, Dino just eating the spicy meatball right there. He tried to dodge it though, to his credit, but it was just a second too late. He realized he was a little bit hungry and ate it anyway. So far, just a lot of trash coming on the Zerker side. And yeah, these first few waves are gonna be very easy for this team, especially considering they have a solid strategy for winning and a medic so things shouldn't uh deteriorate too quickly having the medic yeah. there is just a really nice safety net and you never really have to take your eyes off the enemy since you're going to be pretty much constantly being healed by him yeah yeah they definitely opted to go you know again i said at the beginning of the stream that if they hadn't had a medic they would have gotten a, a 1.5x score multiplier and which would have been a, a really big multiplier but they definitely opted to take the safer route and i think that's honestly the smarter play there is a rage FP on the right. Actually, about to be two rage FPs, two scrakes, and a bunch of QPs. First so one's right's made contact, to knocked Voodoo back. Ooh. Yeah, they should have this, I think. Oh, FP did not want to go for it. Ooh, that was a quad hit from that FP. And they have a. Okay, right side. Oh, they have here. two QPs coming in as well, right behind them. Voodoo's got to get the Z time. Oh, they dropped the Z time extensions. They still have two scrakes on right. They're just kind of waltzing in, and left even, too. All right, one's freeze. frozen. First one's down. Have to get these down. Okay, Second one's like down. They, they should be able to push back and clear out very quickly now. Yeah, that was a little bit of a scary moment, just because they got pushed into that center area, and if they don't have a way out, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be made quick work of, especially by AOE Zeds such as bloats, husks, and sirens. Indeed, yeah. Great double takedown from uh, the sharpshooter on the two scrakes there. By the way, he completely soloed them. At least it looked like he did. one of the things about Scrakes is that a lot of people get caught up on killing flush pounds and I would agree that that's generally the more high value target but Scrakes are actually they're pretty good at just kind of getting in the way and pushing you back and if you don't take care of them soon enough you can just kind of find yourself in the corner yep same with QPs I feel yeah exactly they're so fast yeah good recovery from the team on that on that uh push back there I think the other reason why they had to go medic as well, just because demo is a very uh, high uh, maintenance class. It hurts himself a whole lot trying to kill largest. Yeah, I think they just, like I said, I think they just kind of thought that, you know, the, the extra damage and the utility was more worth it than the no medic bonus. And yeah, I think that's generally a smarter move. And, and you know, it's not that they have to go for that. They could easily make up those points back by other means if they play fast or if they decide to do multiple objectives. 
I don't blame them for go not going for that objective on the second wave just because it was in such a bad spot. But they may decide to go for some of the future ones in this uh, in this match. I hope uh, hope they do. I'm excited to see a one one group that decides to do it. They're not taking sure any chances flash on that bound. flash bound. Indeed, they're not taking any chances. Just might as well freeze them. That's a good. That's honestly that's a good uh, mindset to have. You've got the grenade. Just just take him out and uh, get him down as quickly as possible to get to the next wave. What is forty dash? All right, so uh, Kusu has bought the Zweihander. Let's see, what other? Zwei and, Zwei and a nail gun. Ooh, classic combo. Yeah, that's pretty much the meta the meta CD loadout for uh, Berserker, so everybody not surprised seemed, like that. Yeah, everybody seemed to have been getting an Arsenal upgrade this round. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, Dino. He looks like he still only has uh, the, 18, or the, yeah, the 1858s and the SPX, but... Everybody else I mean, is packing heat. All you really need is the SPX as a gunslinger, let's be honest here. Oh, Kusu tried to go for a, a play there with Spartan and get some uh, FPs down with the nail gun, but unfortunately they dropped that time. But no worries, Mr. Failology just completely decimated them right afterwards anyway, which is one of the benefits of having a Zerk and Demo together. They really they really complement each other, honestly. You sure one do. of those dynamic duos. Ooh. Fail one with 500 Magnum. I haven't seen that combo in a while. And I think he definitely has C4 somewhere in his pockets. I can't wait to see him use that more. He is fully loaded, so he I, probably has the 500 C4 and an upgraded RPG. Well, you can't do an R upgraded RPG if you have a 500 Magnum. Oh, that's right. You have to use the Deagle, my bad. Zerker's looking a little low, but he's pretty much fine now. Quick recovery. Yeah, Kusu's playing really aggressively using using his Spartan ability to move in real time and Z time. Uh, which which is honestly it's really smart to do that because he can make up for, you know, some distance and get rid of some of the high value targets, but it could also be his undoing if he gets a little bit too overconfident and overextends. So it's gonna take a lot of communication on their part with Commando especially, just letting him know like, hey I'm gonna run out of Z time, you know you need to drop back and that kind of thing. Because if they slip up on that, he could find himself caught out with no Z time and like four flush pounds. More like 14 crawlers usually for me. Or that, yeah. <laughs> hey, getting tickled in the feet is actually pretty deadly, okay? Very. Yeah, just smooth sailing all around. They're just, they're, I mean, really, that last wave was like, I think the closest they got to even getting pushed, so. Yeah, a little bit even of heat then, spawning here now. Even then, I would say it was probably just a uh, unfortunate circumstance. Two raged FPs over on the right flank, plus one QP. First FP is down. Second one is getting jacked up. And he's frozen oh. dead. And they handled that like nothing. Yeah, another and QP. Dino taking a crit there. He's kind of I, in the middle there. Oh, okay, never mind. Run of X went over and bailed him out. I really did enjoy the fact that they got the freeze right when the FP hit. Yeah, I was going to talk about that too. They did a good job there of not shooting the Flush Pound as soon as he hit, uh, what was it, Mernavex? Or no, sorry, he hit Chiron. And if had they shot him, they would have re-raged it. So it's good that they all waited together there. Yeah, that's one of the most annoying things when playing pubs or playing with sort of newer people is they tend to just unload into raging Flush Pounds. And once they de-rage, if they take even a little bit of damage, once their timer or their cooldown starts, they will instantly re-rage, and that is not something you want to do, especially when you have two uh, two flush pounds bearing down on you. They got two more on the right side, although these aren't uh, spawned raged. They're just gonna freeze them, I assume. Yep. yep. And gone. Just completely. This is why freeze grenades are the best grenade in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Just Absolutely be careful uh, where you get your supplier from, you know. Yeah, you don't want to get those. Uh, Knock off freeze grenades. The ones that just don't, yeah, they just don't do anything. <laughs> so again, just to reiterate for the viewers, the score at the upper right corner of the screen is constantly ticking down because they are uh, losing time bonus the longer they take here. So it is in their best interest to complete the waves as quickly as they possibly can to preserve Ooh, as much of that point. This looks like an interesting objective hold. Oh yeah, the fireplace room. 
Honestly, I could see them going for this. It's right next to where they already are anyway. Yeah. Let's, let's look at it. So we got three points of ingress. We have uh, from where they were holding, and then they have the two doors that are sort of next to each other. It's sort of it's a hard hold just because it's a very close range, very very tight. But I think it's doable. But I don't know if they're gonna go for it. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, they could be going for the opting of just speed running. It looks like speed running and uh, not dying. That those are two pretty good ways to have a good score. Ooh, triple FP and an A scrake on the left side. I wonder if he's, oh, he's got the C4 out. One of them's dead with a nail bomb, or a uh, nail gun, sorry. And done. That oh, that was quite work of that. That was, uh, that didn't even look challenging to them. <laughs> and that poor scrake got just bisected by a Zwei. He was a bit late to the party. He was too busy uh, getting gassed by the Destroyer of Worlds. I still remember the old days of that before they uh, nerfed it. God, it was so stupid when demo originally came out. Yeah, destroy or what was it called? Nuke then? It was yeah. called Nuke back then. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I mean, it's still really good right now. It gets it, honestly, if you use it properly, you can get so much value out of it because it basically is just like an area denial, right? You shoot it in a doorway, and not only are you going to decimate larges in the doorway, like flush mounds especially, but you're also going to have a residual gas effect that's just going to absolutely wreck any, you know, clods, crawlers, all the small zeds. Looks and like we got a triple quarter coming from upstairs, but they're taking care of that. But I was going to iterate upon, yeah, the original, though, the scaling for the uh, damage of the gas cloud used to be, like, a one for one of the weapon's damage. And not only that, too, it had infinite vertical... Uh, uh, hit detection. Oh, that's right. I actually do remember that now. I forgot about the vertical part. Yeah, it would just go all the way up to the moon, basically. So, so no matter how far above the you they were, you would just kill them in one hit. <laughs> yeah, your, your kill feed would just immediately go up because you would kill the Zeds downstairs, upstairs, and everything else. And everybody would just basically take a break until the nuke cloud went away. Raging FP on the Berserker and Demo side, but he got deraged by the Destroyer of Worlds, and that's another thing that's also nice about that. Uh, the gas will derage FPs. Oh, they got another Ooh. FP though. Oh, and he's gone. And another and one. Gone. And another one. There's there's two. And two Scrakes. Ooh, getting pushed a bit. Yeah, this should have this no problem. I think they're just yeah. gonna block it and then yeah. They that's just one. The Second one. Uh, the Scrakes may be a bigger problem actually. Just slowly inching them back. Yeah, and it looks like they did call over Kyrim. I saw him rotate there, so they're probably telling each other in comms to rotate over. It's a good call. Then it looks like they're all gone. And thanks to uh, Spartan, he can quickly get back up into the field and just absolutely decimate. Yep. Oh, that's that was beautiful. Fantastic value from Spartan right there. Now they've got four qu uh, quarter pounds on the right side now, but those should, I don't see them making it very far in though. GPs are pretty fast and they're a bit of a nuisance, but they're not very strong uh, health wise, so. And they don't hit nearly as hard as a, a raging flush bound. Yeah. I don't think that poor Scrake deserved what happened to him there, I think. So yeah, I don't know. So far, they haven't done any of the objectives there. There was one this way too, and they didn't do it. So I wonder if they're just gonna play a safe route entirely and just not even, not even bother doing them at all. Which is not a, which is not really a bad plan. Um, you know, it is risky. Fast and safe does give you a decent score. Indeed, yeah. They've just gone just below 3k here, so this is still a really good score. The base score being 1,000, uh, 2.8k is pretty good. So. I think this is the first time I've seen somebody get to wave five with only fifth, like sixteen minutes. That's that's ridiculous. Yeah, indeed, that's really really good. Time bonus is one of the largest bonus pulls out of them all. So if you can maximize that value, you can get a lot of points, as we see right now. They're going to be getting another five hundred, you know. And if no one dies, they're going to have full health bonus. That's going to be quite a bit of extra points in the end. All right, wave six. This is where things are going to get interesting in my book.
heard the flesh pounds spawn, but I actually can't find them. Oh, I they think it's just upstairs. a bunch of quarter pounders. No, no they are upstairs. upstairs. They are upstairs. Oh, There's I see them. them, yes. I see them now. Two of them coming down. I have a QP with them, too, actually. Oh, another one raged over here. Oh, that was a QP, my bad. Oh, they have two on the uh, right side as well. That are about to be a problem. They are just going to get completely annihilated. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Switched over just in time to see that. No match for Destroyer of Worlds. Now they have double FP on the right. No, triple FP actually on the right. But again, two frozen. They're just going to get completely er eradicated. That last one that raged in the back, though, could be a problem. Yeah. No, oh, they actually got separated. Okay, there we go. This one's about to go down, too. I want to call out something that Voodoo Doll just did there on the right hand side. He actually he noticed that that back flush pound was not being taken care of because they were busy with the first one. So he went and he purposely got hit by it to derage it. That way it wouldn't push the team back too far. Uh, which I think is a really, really good, smart, really smart play on his part. Yeah, a lot of people try to run away from the FP when you should just bite the bullet and just take the hit. Yeah, just get the derage. That way the team has some more room, you know, and it, lets, it ended up letting them take care of it no problem. As opposed to the chaos that could have happened if he had, you know, just kept shooting it. So they are they are handling it relatively smoothly, I'd say. Still, what's happening now is just as they get further in the game, their recovery ability from mistakes is going to lessen and lessen. Like if they mess up once, it's gonna they're gonna pay the price for it, you know. Yep, the margin of error like definitely this. shrinks. Yeah, because this the thing about this hold is that both sides are getting pressured pretty hard and if one if they have to leave pretty much no matter which way they try to go it's going to be full of stuff and you could be seeing a death happening there <laughs> provided they full hold i mean this actually could be pretty this could have been like the best spot for them to use this composition on who's going out way far to kill this fp here with the nail gun he is going to get it oh it's just it's so wonderful to watch that that's so fun to do <laughs> <laughs> You just, oh, and you just feel like shot. you just feel like a god. Like you, nobody can. They can't even do anything to you, and you just completely annihilate them. Some bizarre ward, though. That's gonna be pretty much the end of wave six, making it look easy. So far, this so far this has been a really excellent performance from the entire team here. You can tell that this is a rehearsed uh, strategy. You know, they've been practicing this a lot, and it shows. I, I, feel, hit there. I feel like uh, Fails is having a great time here. It's just the Zerk at his lane just enables him to do everything perfectly, and, and he can take his leisurely time doing it, too. Yeah, Berserkers definitely buy time, and they can pretty much indefinitely hold a, a few Zeds um, and allow for the other team, or the rest of the team, to actually take out larges or wh whatever needs to get done at the time. Yeah, it, as a as a demo, you, you have to be really careful because it takes three RPGs to kill the full health FP at this level. And if you're not careful, that can take quite a while. Like, you know, sometimes you screw up a reload or, you know, you miss and something, and that just costs you precious, precious time before he rages. But now, Fail can miss or, you know, mess up a reload and whatever, and he can be perfectly fine because there's a Zerk just holding him back. Yeah, exactly. And, and one of the biggest things about control difficulty play is Z time efficiency, right? You want to maximize every, every Z time string that you can. And so, you know, the, the, the players on the right that are with Voodoo Doll, the commando, are going to want to make sure they're not stealing extensions from him, not killing the trash. And just in general, everybody wants to be prioritizing going for the largest because the scrakes and FBs that are leaking in, if they get their backs against the wall, that's pretty much the end, right? So they got to make use of that Z time as much as possible. I have also noticed that it seems uh, Fails using the Zerk to also save on rockets. He just shot that QP once, then let, uh, let the Zerk just uh, finish him off. Yeah, indeed, that is very smart. They have two FPs on the right. One's raging. They did get the kill, but the sec. It's oh, actually two three. more again. Yeah, there's a third one there. I think they're going to be able to get him, no problem, though. Yep. Second one. Yeah. Yep, there they, they go. Uh, but now we got some more stuff spawning in. Let's see if they're coming in on the right side. Does it look like it? It's probably going to be over on the right. 
Or the left? Just a couple of scrakes so Just far a few the scrakes right. there. Kusu again, just kind of going out, going wild, <laughs> taking out uh, scrakes with the nail gun. He must be having a good time too, I imagine. Oh yeah. I mean, it's really, really fun when you have a good commando player and you can just kind of just walk around and just kind of take everybody out. Kill the scrake for even has a chance to blink. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly has an entire Home Depot stock in his face. It's a new one. Gusu's being really aggressive in Zed time too. He's definitely taking full advantage of all that uh, mobility he gets. Yeah, he's really he's really just trusting everything in Voodoo to get those extensions for him. And Voodoo's doing an excellent job at that too. I'm actually really happy to see him playing Commando. He honestly, I haven't seen him play Commando in a while. He usually plays Sharpshooter. Oh, so. this might be Harry. They got oh. two Q, or four quarter pounds. There's a, there's or a four flesh pounds, pounds the sorry. Side. Five yeah, flesh pounds. But the Zerker's holding them back and fails just shooting RPGs and putting C4. They need to get this Zed time. If they get this Zed time, this, sh this should be no problem at all. Yep, two are dead. I think there's only Empty one more the left. Rear. Oh, oh no, there's, wow. a, there's one Excellent. in the rear. Yep. Excellent Zed time usage there. That's exactly what I was just talking about earlier about Zed time uh, efficiency, right? They, they did a, that's a fantastic job there from everybody. Had they dropped that Zed time chain there, that would have definitely been a push, I think. Kaboom. I think I, I think I saw a fail screw up a reload there on those FDs as well. But I could be wrong. Currently, he, he has no RPG in his RPG. He's trying to go for his that fancy reload cancel. Two FPs on the right, but again, they're the last Zeds in the wave, so these should be no problem for them, I'd imagine. Yeah, that, that was honestly a really, really good job by Kusu and Voodoo. I mean, everybody helped, but those two basically saved the team from having to kite right there. Yeah. Which would have, which would have wasted, you know, not only potentially wasted some health bonus had somebody died, but they're also saving a lot of time uh, by not having to kite. So excellent job that wave. And I would also like to iterate, too, is the fact that, uh, you know, people say a quad FP is scary, but... I think the most scary thing is the, being the lone FP when the entire team is coming after you. Indeed, yeah. Pretty uneventful yeah, still as far as like getting uh, overrun. They've been handling a lot of the curveballs that this uh, spawn cycle likes to throw at them. So now they're on wave 8. And no deaths, uh, really no hiccups. Uh, nobody, I don't even think anybody's really gotten super close to dying either. There were some, you know, hairy, t hairy moments, but... Nothing that warranted uh, too much concern. Yeah, um, I'm thinking it's just it just goes to show just how strong a demo really is when it comes to just wiping out something in front of you. It's just he's just a bit slow at sometimes at it, but he can just surely destroy a lane if you let him. You know, if you enable him. One important thing to remember too is that Zed time. Uh, the timer goes on actual game time, not uh, not perceived like human game time. So Zed time will not penalize them if uh, if they're in Zed time for an extended period of time. The timer will also slow down in relation to that. Indeed, yeah. So they can actually, you know, they, if you think about it, right? If the game were running in real time, they actually would be uh, killing faster. But with triple FP on the right side here, but they're just gonna freeze. One down. There's one dead. <laughs> Other two are pretty close to raging. Oh, that one stumbled right as he got frozen. But he's Four dead, seven. and th there goes the third one. Really, really not much uh, danger to the team at all there. They had, they all did a really good job of taking them down. So, what is the boss going to be? Because I know the bosses are determined beforehand, or is that still a surprise? No, the boss is going to be Hans for this round. Okay. Cool. So they will be fighting uh, Dr. Hans Bolter. Dr. Touchy. Uncle Touchy, as we call him, yep. Husu again, just going ham, taking out Screaks like they're nothing. 
I see that Fail now has a steady supply of RPGs, so he's just gonna go absolutely nuts with them now. Yeah, and I imagine that they picked this spot too because of the trader being right there, right? So not only is it quicker for them to get their spares, but it's also just closer. Uh, they, they, you know, it's saves them the time. The yeah, they're saving lots of time, and and it's easier for them to transport the spares too. So two flesh pounds on the left, three flesh pounds on the left, four flesh pounds on the four, left. Okay. They need to get on that back one as quickly Ooh. as possible. Cause it's gonna time rate soon. We yep. got Zed time, and they are all gonna be dismantled. Yep, Ooh, there goes okay. two. Third one is really worried about that last flush pound. Yep, and then if the fourth one rages, no big deal. They they don't they're not gonna worry about anything else. Yeah, they're just gonna tank it. And he's uh, knocked out. Flying through the air right Whoa. now. Uh, <laughs> interesting <laughs> physics there, killing floor. <laughs> Absolutely getting bullied by the berserker. And he's he dead. just had happy thoughts while flying through there, you know? Alright, they got two more at least. Let's see where it rains it pours, so they might have some coming from upstairs. Doesn't look like it. Everything right now is on the Berserker side. There's really not much going on on the Commando side of things, honestly. Poor Commando. Guzu did drop to about half health here, though. He's got to be a little bit careful. Yep, and he doesn't have armor anymore, so he can uh, go down pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, one missed parry, that could actually be a death from him at that level of health, so... Yeah, it's all fun and games to get the nail gun take down, but if you lose your parry at the wrong oh, moment... Oh, Gusu's dropping really low, he's like down to 10 HP there. Okay, oh, we got a Rage Scrake and an FP. Oh, that's Scrake, that time just yeah. saved him. That Scrake almost did him in right there, and it was really close. Yep. He managed oh. to recover, good heals from Urnabex there. Yep, Medic has really shown its value. A bomb? I feel rocking the achievement there. Got Voodoo showing off here getting his 9mm extensions. I did notice that he's using the uh, M16 too, which is... I love the M16 on... I know I've said this to you guys, but I love the M16 on Commando. It's actually a really, really good weapon. I definitely enjoy it just because sometimes I do get, just want to take care of QPs in a very quick fashion. Yeah, it's really good. You know. For some of the viewers who aren't aware, uh, flush pounds and quarter pounds do take increased damage from explosive sources, so that makes that weapon extremely good, especially when it's upgraded against QPs, and it actually lets you help a little bit against them. But the main I, reason I actually like the M16 is you can just delete bloats with it and get a free extension for it. Yep. It's actually really helpful. I just recommend that you don't try to take on an FP with it, though. QPs, yeah. all for sure. I, I see a lot of comments in my commando guide. I didn't really, I didn't really give the M16 a good appraisal for the commando for dealing with larges, and a lot of people swear by it. But unfortunately, when you're starting to play on CD or uh, you know Hell on Earth, flesh pounds just have way too much health for the M16 to kill them effectively. Yeah, it's definitely like a support uh, role at best, right? Like you shouldn't be taking them on, but you know, in, in a supporting role, if someone else is kind of taking the the brunt of it, you can definitely help a lot. And I, I personally feel if you have to take on larges, the FAL kind of does it better. Yeah, agreed. The FAL is one of the highest damaging weapons for Commando. It is the highest damaging weapon, actually, in fact. So entering wave 9 here. And oh, it's wave 9? Wave. I thought it was still wave 6 with how well <laughs> they're just absolutely flooring these poor Zeds. Yep, yeah, they it, are. it may start to get a little sketchy here with uh, the amount of flush pounds and scrakes they're going to have to deal with. So this is where they will... Uh, make their stand. So far, uh, you can't really prove they had a stand as uh, Fail is just deleting all DNA evidence from the field. In a good mix of uh, larges over on the right side now. They had a, a quarter pound, some scrakes, and then also a flush pound now. Ooh, that FP that, calm hit on the right side lane. Yeah, they that pretty didn't much sound good. All armor there. It's unfortunate when they do those combos. Looks like we got three FPs on the left side, although one's about to go bye-bye. Oh, they did drop the Z time, though. That's unlucky. They need to hit that Siren, though. I don't think Kusu sees it. Okay, yeah, Bale got her. Oh, Sirens are three are flesh pounds. One of worst enemies. Oh, just kidding. Now there's one. Two of them just got deleted <laughs> by Fail. Nice job, Fail. Flesh pounds. What? Fl yeah, exactly. What flesh pounds? <laughs> what flesh pounds? You can't prove they were here. I'm malicious. What are the what are those glowing gauntlets on the floor, Nick? Uh, just just scrap metal, you know. It, the Santa it does a little scrap business on the side. Little dumb, uh, killing floor two lore. Uh, the gauntlets are actually their restraint devices, not weapons. 
but obviously don't ask me why their uh, restraint devices spin though yeah that you know i don't think they spent a whole lot of time on the killing floor laura they were sort of like ah oh, you know we want this ooh, guy triple Let's... Ooh. Gun kill. oh nice man shot, that, was rocket. that was beautiful oh, another what? achievement coming out from fail there and a donk on the scrake at point blank range yeah, the, the left, left lane is getting so much work done. Yeah, left lane might as well. You might as well just, you know, pretend it doesn't exist at this point. They are just going to destroy everything that comes in here. This was such a great allocation of the players and the perks to the lanes. Like, this is honestly the, the best setup they could have done for this. Oh, yeah. Well, chaos perks do disrupt if you interchange, like, a precision in there, all that. But if you just let a chaos perk go nuts and you have somebody to help them out, that doesn't mind the chaos, it can get so much work done. Yeah. Yep, a field but medic. Exactly on the left, though, too, and not on the right. Like, I think if they had swapped them, the groups, like the, the precision players being on the left side, I think they, it would have been a lot more difficult for them. Like, yeah. there's plenty of trash to get Zed time off of, but there's also a much longer sight line, and when those, like, quad rages come in, they're not going to be able to slow them down, right? But now that they have Kusu there, you can just kind of tank them up, so. Yeah, the they have Kusu and Murnivex to slow, them, slow down on a large Zed, so Murnivex can slow them down with the Hemo, and then uh, uh, Kusu can slow him down with uh, just by body blocking or parrying or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the the best part I find is just the fact that Fail is currently doing the work of three people pretty much. Let's look at the the scoreboard really quick. Let's look at kills. I haven't I haven't checked it out yet. So yeah, we have uh, Voodoo. On the HUD in the bottom. Oh, they are. I knew yeah. that. Look at you tomorrow, Tamari. But as a, a little bit easier to see. Uh, we do have Voodoo leading in kills and assists, uh, followed closely by fail, uh, Mr. Failology, which makes sense considering he's doing a lot on the left lane. And so is Kusu, actually. But after that, the kills start to taper off. I'm actually thinking here, do you guys want to hop over to their war room for like about 30 seconds next wave? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hop well, over let's, during... Let's give it a second and see. Yeah, I was going to say, once once we hit the climax of a wave, we'll, we should hop over there. If they have to kite, then we're definitely going over, but yeah. Kind of want to listen to their comms a little bit and see, because I, I know I know most of these players, I've played with most of them a lot, and I know that the, you know, they're, like, I, I, I could just see it. Like, they're when they get multiple scrakes on the left side for the Berserker, I notice that Kyrim almost always comes over, so no doubt they're telling him to, you know, flex over and help out with the freeze. Yep, a freeze can go a long way. Even if it misses a large set, it can, it can cause all those, the smaller sets to body block them, and at least buy them some time. Yeah. So we're finally moving to wave 10, and it's only been 30 minutes. This is a very fast game, yeah. The the short spawn on the right side is definitely making the the waves go by a lot faster. And then the ability for the left side to just completely de destroy all of the Zeds very rapidly has also allowed them to chew through the uh, Zed spawns quickly. But if there's any wave that could go you know, the wrong way, it's going to be this one, because uh, wave 10 is quite a difficulty jump, especially right at the start. They get a really massive flush pound spawn, so we'll have to see what happens here. It, it really depends on which side they come on, honestly. I think if the left side gets a really crazy spawn from far away, it could actually end up being a bit hectic there. But... I'm thinking if the right side gets a huge pot, they're going to have issues, I think. Yeah. I think, left, way, I, really. think, I think left is just going to just dead stop it with FP face and then, or sorry, uh, Berserker face and then just fail is just going to throw 15 bricks to C4 and destroy everything. Oh. Kusu making it look really easy. I noticed uh, looking at uh, fail's explosive pile, he has extra C4. <laughs> So it's gonna be really disgusting. Ooh, we got a triple FP on the right, but Z time. We'll see if they, they got Z time. Up. Yep. Oh, Murnivax has switched over to the here. right. Ooh. Oh, he was just grabbing some heals for uh, somebody that was wounded. It looks like they tried to prep that flush pound for the commando to get an extension off it, but I think they accidentally shot one extra time and killed it. So they unfortunately dropped that Z time chain. No worries. I mean, they're, the team isn't really in any sort of trouble right now, so. Voodoo's M203 grenade raised the flush pound around the corner. That's one of the dangers Ooh, of using that gun. got hit pretty hard there. It's okay, he was able to fall back. They didn't need the, uh, the healing was available at the time, so I don't think it's gonna be too big of an interruption. 
Right side's getting a little bit pushed from all those quarters. Yep, they're pushing back though. They just gotta worry about these scrakes and Voodoo is securing that Zed time. Exactly what they needed. We're about halfway done with this wave now. Yeah, Zed time is the bread and butter that's keeping this going, honestly. I just, I just always like to just see how a good demolitionist works. It's just, it's just wonderful to watch. So they've got a triple FP now very far on the left hand side here. So they probably will be time raging before they make it close enough to them. Because uh, they have seen the players on the left hand side now, so. Oh yeah, things are going to get spicy on the left lane. Oh, Kusu dropping to about 60% health here. If he gets hit hard here, okay, he did get killed. I think they may have to have someone flex to the left side, unless it, unless that time hits right now. Nope, they got some fro frost grenades over there. Although I don't know how much yeah. that actually helped. Oh yeah, there we go. They, they've they keep this control. going. They this. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, fail aiming the rocket up to hit all those husks back there. Just under 100 zeds left now. If you can't tell by the in-game noise, there's a lot of large zeds that just spawned in. <laughs> Yeah, both sides dealing with a double right now, it looks like. Or no, sorry, there's only one on the left side. You know it's not a good sound when you, your uh, game sounds like a motocross park. Oh. I, I, I'm going to just uh, do a vote of confidence and say I think Fail might have the highest large count at the end of this. Yeah, I would, <laughs> I would not be surprised at all. Although, who's the sharp over there? Uh, Kyrum has also been killing quite a few of them. Dale's got 73 right now, I just looked. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot of damage. Voodoo getting that M203 extension on the blow. I love it. That's why I love that gun so much. It's so amazing to watch. Looks like triple FP left side. So many bloats. ASL? Yeah. Yeah, they should have this though. Nine Zeds left. This is they honestly just completely decimated this match. Yep. Yeah, this is going to be a really, uh, this pretty much sets Very the bar for the rest form. of the round. So other yeah. teams are going to have to do similar or they're going to have to go for that nomadic bonus. Right. Indeed, yeah. And for the viewers, again, uh, the, every team is playing the same match, like the same map in the same exact settings. And the goal is to get the best score out of everybody. So right now it's looking like they're going to be rolling into the boss wave with over 2k points. So if they get this boss wrapped up as quickly as possible, they could easily maintain, you know, 2K plus, and everybody's objective is going to be to beat that, basically. So, really solid that, performance in the philosopher here. That was fantastic. No deaths. They just every way was just, just a just floor wipe. Yeah, absolutely. They got close a couple of times. There was a couple of unlucky moments, uh, especially like Voodoo getting that crit and then the calm hit. But Mernavex though, just. Just on top of it, man. He did a great job as the medic, too. Everybody. Do you think, do you think uh, Mr. Phalology is going to turn Mr. Hans into a Christmas tree? I believe so, yeah. And don't forget, guys, we can spectate the boss, too. So, just wanted to mention that. Oh, yeah. Let's watch an old man get bullied. Oh, we got a couple bricks to see for, and oh, look at that shield get just destroyed by the new gas. He's almost there. There we go. They got that first shield down. He is going to get up and throw grenades now, though, unless they get him in the orange state. So, okay, nope, they there we go. The orange state. <laughs> they skipped that AT grenade phase. Oh, nope, quarters are spawning now. They better be careful. Yeah, Hans actually is one of the bosses that has the capability of actually spawning uh, flesh pounds on HOE, so they have to be a little bit careful about that. Oh, he was able to get a heal off of uh, Kusu, I believe. See Voodoo off to the left there, just getting the extensions. Good job on his part. And poor Hans here. It's just getting He's about to go up. red. Oh, he Lighting got frozen. Just go ham. Yep, he's red now. This is where you gotta be careful because Hans loves to throw grenades in the red phase. Worst thing that could happen right now is after he gets done healing, uh, he there could be too many things on the other side for them to get away from the grenades. So they do need to make sure that the other side of the uh, you know the hold is clear so they can actually move away Ooh, all these grenades Ooh, those grenades almost got two kills there they stabilize they're stabilizing though i think they should be fine yeah, they... is taking hits Ooh, kyrim's getting hundred honestly they should just back out and just play it safe it's not worth the death this late yep yeah kyrim is sitting at like about oh kusu 
More grenades. He needs to get out of there. Using Spartan. I don't oh, know he's if he's going. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's dead. Nuke deployed. Oh, great job. That got really close, but yeah, no, they didn't have any deaths, so no health bonus lost. Twenty-one twelve is or, sorry, sorry, twenty-one twenty-two. So you want to be the final score for the philosophers on Santa's workshop. Yeah, all around, man. That was just an amazingly played game. They just made that look easy. Uh, the issue, though, is I don't think Santa's workshop is going to be used anytime soon with the amount of radiation in the area. Oh, let's see. Let's look at the awards. So, obviously, uh, oh, we got Zed Stomper from Kusu. That makes sense. He's playing Zerker. Stop, stop changing my, my frame. Uh, we got most kills from Voodoo. Uh, Destroyer, Mr. Failology doing the most damage. Mr. Failology getting the Giant Slayer, Mr. Failology getting money bags, um, and then Voodoo getting the most headshots and the most assists, and obviously Murdovex healing the most. Excellent, excellent job. Um, everybody hope, just played this so well. I really hope Fail comes in for the uh, interview because I would like to see what he has to say about what he was doing there. Yeah, we will be getting two players from the team in for an interview very shortly here uh, for about 10, 10, 15 minutes or so. And uh, we'll, we'll have a chat with them about how the game went. So just give us a quick second here to let the team reply back. And then we should get that underway. Uh, while we're waiting, though, I just wanted to ask you guys, uh, you first, Nick. Who would you say, if you had to pick one, uh, who would you say is the MVP for that? Oh, one? no contest, Mr. Phaeology. I mean, he was just absolutely decimating that left lane i think it's just i know i know the zerk was enabling them and allowing them to do that but at the same time just there was three people on the right side and they had to take things one at a time he just walked up to four fbs for a brick of c4 and just decimated absolutely decimated i'm gonna vote for kusu just because uh, he his use of uh, Spartan and his ability to enable the control on the the right lane was pretty pretty critical to their success, and I oh, think yeah. it was also I, also the main reason they were able to recover so easily. But I can see why Nick uh, chose. If I well. really had to, if I really had to choose, I would probably say the duo. Yeah, both of them honestly, but For you sure. can you can really only choose one MVP. But I mean, it was just magical watching that go off. Yeah, like I said, they, they honestly, that was like the best placement of those perks that they could have possibly chosen for that hold, in my opinion. And I would say, okay, yeah, so it looks like it's going to be Mr. Fail and, and Voodoo. But real quick before I drag them in, I did want to say that for me, I'm going to go with uh, Voodoo, actually. I know it's kind of cliche voting the commando, but the commando is the enabler. And without Voodoo getting consistent extensions, none of that would have been possible. They would have surely gotten pushed. It could have led to some deaths. It could have led to a wipe, actually, even. But that being said, everybody played excellently, so... Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Voodoo Doll, the Commando, for my MVP pick. And with that, let me go ahead and drag those two over, and we can get the interview started here. Yeah, hello? Hello, guys. Howdy. So how do you feel about that game? How did it that go? felt great. That was epic. Yeah, um... um it actually, honestly, it went way better than expected. In practice, we were actually having, I wouldn't say, like, a ton of trouble, but sometimes we would just get hit with, like, a crazy spawn or something, like, really difficult, like a quint FP or something insane. For both, um, for both sides, too. For both sides. And sometimes it, uh, like, it just didn't really happen that much this game. Maybe it was just, like, the large divvied out differently, or we just got better at killing stuff, so it didn't group up. But uh, this game went really, really smooth. I hope it also looked like that in, in practice. Oh, it was... Yeah. On, on our end, it looked like you guys weren't even really trying. It was just like, <laughs> easy peasy, guys. Easy with GG. Get out of here. I'll mm. say this right now. We never had a deathless run in practice. Not yeah, really. we would normally we would wow. normally take a we normally take a death early. Uh, a weakness of our of our team is demo. Demo being really bad early on. So on wave one and wave two, because of how we divvy money, uh, the left side would be particularly weak compared to the right side. So it, it was common. It was not uncommon to see early deaths from like wave one to four. Is that why you went with uh, dumping money into uh, into failed so he could have an RPG? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And normally, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it specifically, but Kusu on wave two, not only did he keep his Kravel, but he actually didn't go skirmisher because he couldn't even afford a nail gun at that point. Oh. Because we put money into me. 
getting the RPG um, straight from Wave 2. Yeah, I did um, notice. I did notice that he kept the Krovel, but I didn't actually pick up that he didn't swap to Skirmisher. That's pretty smart. Yeah, though. he didn't go Skirmisher just because he can't capitalize on it very well on Wave Two, just because of how the loadouts work and the money and stuff. Uh, it completely makes sense. Yeah, no, that's that's really great to hear that. Uh, you, you guys actually played this. Actually, this match actually went better than your practice sessions. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah. For us, it looked like you guys were just a yeah well old machine. Like we were really impressed by it. just just terminators. Honestly, yeah. like the, the, <laughs> like the way hands, man. the way you were holding that left lane, like it was a joke. Like, oh hey, look, quad FP guys, it's gonna be a try, and it's already <laughs> dead. Okay. Yeah. It, the um early on when we we initially started with the other spot, the one by the the very first room that opens up when you play the map and objective. That's the spot we started with, but mm -hmm. uh. The, the cornerstone of our team is Kusu playing Zerker, and Kusu Zerker just, it didn't work very well in that spot. So there was this other spot, the one that we ended up playing, and we played it out, and it felt good, but the left side gets a lot of time rage. So we wanted to put Kusu there, because, you know, Berserker ah. works well, but then no one else, like, we didn't have a perk to go with him. We were, like, going to put Kyle with him, but then it's, it's just, like, puts a lot of chaos. And on Hellmark, instead, what we did is we had Zerker and Mando play together. He would, like, uh, collect trash for the Mando, and then when Zed time hit, he'd run away and go Spartan stuff, like, over who knows where, while the Mando picked up all the trash. But we couldn't do that here. It, it just didn't work out. Um, so we were like, what's an adaption we can make? Let's just play Chaos left side. Because it, it, Kusu's Berserker is, like, really integral to the team, so we wanted to play around it as much as possible. So mm -hmm. I was right for voting Kusu as the MVP, is what you're saying. Kusu is the MVP. Yeah. Oh. He enables the demo to work on the left. Yeah, I, I gave I gave my MVP to you, Fail, just simply because you were just... You were doing some good duck combos there. Just <laughs> absolutely <laughs> destroying them. You were my, you were my yeah. second MVP, but I was like, oh, that Zerker <laughs> really just makes... It makes everybody's life easier, honestly. It, it makes... More, it, uh, yeah, it can... It completely it enables space. our strategy. Yeah, it creates space, too. It, it was more like an NVD, honestly. A most valuable <laughs> duo. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of I'm happy because I, I was actually speaking directly about the composition and about how you guys actually had allocated the players to the lanes. And I pretty much said exactly what you just, you just confirmed, and that would be that you guys put the chaos on the left side just so you can take care of those time rages and keep them mm -hmm. back so you can take them down. And I'm kind of glad to, to know that I had the right idea with that. Yeah. I think I definitely think that that was like the best way you could have possibly allocated those perks, in my opinion. On on one hand, we could have put Precision on left, and in practice, we did try a lot. We had Voodoo and Dino and uh, and Kyle play on the left side, and just, like, feeling it out. Maybe the right side was better to play Zerk Demo. Just We just wanted to feel things out, and the time rage was a really big problem when we put Precision on left. You, have to, you had to play so well, so consistently, to play around the time rage that it just it wasn't worth it, even though yeah. it meant it had some upsides. Yeah, it's like if it's if you if you if you get lucky and don't get a crazy spawn, then it works out fine. But as soon as things kind of start going to hell, it's mm -hmm. really hard to recover. And that's when having the the chaos on that side, I think, works out better. It works out fantastic. I think you guys made the right call. I was I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, was there any reason why you guys decided not to go for any of any of the objectives? Was it like a time thing, or did you just think they were too risky, or what kind of we... went into that? Early on into practice, we looked at the first couple areas, and one or two of them looked okay, but. We just weren't very confident in holding many of them. A lot of them, like the first one, for example, is very short and close range. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, for example, like the spawn door that leads to where you spawn, that, that angle is like right on top of you. There's not a lot of time to take them. Also, we didn't have enough practices to feel really comfortable about it because, like I said in our practice, we actually were not doing as well. So it was more about trying to get comfortable with the hold and playing well than it was to like, okay, let's also try and do objectives on top of, like, a hold that we're kind of struggling with. And then, you, like, making sure we're not wasting time in trader time and blah, blah, blah. You didn't want to spread yourself too thin and all that. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, understandable. understandable. I, I have yeah. a question, though. So, we, we understand what left side was. It was just a cacophony of explosions and uh, <laughs> blocking. But uh, how was your lane, uh, Voodoo? So, this lane is actually... It's pretty tan compared to the left side. But I'm not really used to Commando. And usually when you play CD games with me, you're not really too vocal. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm like almost screaming for like either <laughs> for like pre buffs, <laughs> Kyle to flex, or Kyle to freeze door preemptively. Because like once you get a time rage in like the middle of nowhere, you're going to get pushed. Yeah. So I either call for like Kusu for like a flex during Zed time. You can delete some larges. 
Thankfully, that didn't happen. I know, or like last yeah. practice match, he killed like four flash cards in our lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh shit. We we had that strategy in our back pocket for if one side in particular got like super destroyed, let's say right side was just getting absolutely everything. It almost happened once on like wave nine or ten. But if right side was just getting everything and left side was like asleep, I would actually just play left side alone and just RPG all the trash. And Kusu would go over there and like help them destroy everything. And even like Voodoo might rotate left to start getting trash for Z time. But, I did. Uh... I did we notice Kusu. I did notice Kusu was just. It was hilarious watching him run up to everything. <laughs> and, and, just, time. and just nail gun everything. I, I, I have to corral that guy. Every like, <laughs> I'm sure Voodoo can attest. Like every Z time, I'm like Kusu, come back. Kusu, come back. And I'm, just <laughs> up there and I'm just like, man, don't die. I'm get scared. Because you actually got Goomba. He, he got Goomba. The little ramp on the left of the the left side of the hold, right around the wall. He took a scrank at the end of the wave and got Goomba. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that, that's definitely a, that's one of the things I spoke about too about just like being careful about overextending you know mm -hmm. but I figured that you guys were talking to each other and I'm sure if Voodoo didn't feel confident about extensions you probably just mentioned it yeah so yeah back, you know? luckily luckily on the right side Dino and Kyle are so maybe this might this might sound mean to say but they're so like moldable they're they're such good players and they don't have a lot of practice but they they fundamentally like understand what they need to do and how to do it. So we don't have to teach them necessarily. Yeah. You know, I don't need to tell them like, here's how you head trace a flesh pound. But as long as we're coming together, we, we have really, really good team play. And that like helps the right side look like a well-oiled machine because they may not have tons of experience, but if you can calm to them what they need to do, they've got it. For sure. So and, you want to give a good shout out to like Kyle right there. Like, before the tournament actually started, he didn't play any sharpshooter at all. I yeah. basically drilled his XPX takedowns. Like now he's a like, sharp he's legend. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. Those I guys mean, have that, really stepped up. Everybody just kind of, you know, I can see so much improvement because I've played with some of those players too, and like they've everybody's just honestly, it's been amazing watching everybody kind of grow. For sure, mm -hmm. and you should have just played it off, Phil. Like, oh no, we we floored uh, practice. We, <laughs> <laughs> just... No, it, it, honestly, like in practices, we were getting destroyed. It, like two days ago when we practiced, we practiced for like three or four hours, and we just got like destroyed sometimes. Like, I, I want to say I, I felt like sometimes we were playing like freaking Ospi, and we would get like quintuple and sextuple FPS like over and over. It was insane. In this game, it just didn't happen. We. Did you... Did you guys drink that like special water from the Space Jam film or whatever for the match? <laughs> the secret sauce. Um, and also, you know, I said Dino and uh, Dino and Kyle were doing like really good, and they stepped up as well. Um, but also, Mern our medic is like Mern has played it so much better from like the first time we played it compared to now. Mern would like. Uh, I guess I should put it as, like, way more on top of doing things without having to say them and more intuitively understand. So, like, on the left and right side, it's really important that we get mandates for buffs because, you know, the sides can get very chaotic. And at first, it wasn't super intuitive, but now it was, like, well, like like we said earlier, well-oiled machine. It was, like, very clear which side we needed to go to. And, like, I I'm happy that with all the practices and for this match, it, like, it all came together for everyone, like, just playing, like, playing like gods all in one match. It was very satisfying. Yeah, you guys just looked like I said again, well, old machine. Like it just looked like you guys, you guys were just ready. You know, you had we could tell that you had practiced like the strategy to a T, and mm -hmm. really, really good first match for just setting the bar. You know, I think uh, the rest of the teams are going to have some work to to do to keep up with that. You know, to, to at least match, if not better. You know, because now going into round two, you guys are going to have a, a pretty good score under your belts. You know, and I think if you keep doing that, there's there's a really good chance that uh, you can come out on top. You know. Of all this i think there is a stakes a little bit there's a stake <laughs> between kusu and like freed like which seems to do better this match so that's gonna be a little bit interesting to watch. oh yeah they have a yeah. hundred flat cap bet for whoever gets a higher score <laughs> between the two teams that's funny <laughs> so a lot of, of flat caps on the one um i'm really interested to see if other teams hold the same spot how they deal with left side i'm um, because i know some teams also have zerker players i think uh is a bells team who has trifractal I think uh, I know he, that guy is a crazy Zerker player. I think so so yeah. if they play the same spot, I'm interested to see if they come to the same conclusion we did, or if they find a different way to deal with it. I, I just want to know how other people decide how they deal with the left side if they also play that spot. It, it'll be interesting to see. I think. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And actually, um, 
we are about to be running out of time here. So that actually provides a good segue to the closing remarks that I wanted to make. I did want to mention to everybody watching that there are going to be two more matches tonight. The next one will be occurring, uh, I believe, at 7 o'clock p.m. PST, which is in, what is that, two hours and 45 minutes from now, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. So uh, that'll be hosted on my channel, twitch.tv slash TamariTM. I will actually uh, write that into the chat and dangle the stream after this when I'm done here. But yeah, there'll be another match tonight that should be with Team Throwin. And then at, at uh, 9 o'clock p.m. PST, we will have Team Ice which I believe is the team that Trifractal is on, but I could be wrong about that. Mm. Um, so yeah, come, come watch the next matches. Uh, they will be again on Santa's Workshop. And yeah, is there any uh, last remarks that uh, Nick and Dangles wanted to make real quick? And then I'll give Voodoo and Bale a chance to close up as well. So Nick, did you have anything you wanted to add real quick before we close up? I was just going to say I'm very happy at just how smooth the game went in general, both for the players and the server as well. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, it was great. Uh, pretty much the same thing. The game went super well, especially after seeing uh, quite a few of the practice matches or some of the the trial matches just to get the server ironed out. Um, I was kind of skeptical that anybody could do it without um, without sustaining some casualties throughout the the match. So good on you guys for not dying. Thank you, thank you. So words to live by: don't <laughs> die. <laughs> All right, yeah, and I think that's going to close everything up unless you uh, fail in Voodoo. You had any last-second things you wanted to add in? I got I got nothing. GG's to my team. GG's to everyone. Good luck to everyone that's also playing. That's about it. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for joining. And Yeah, uh, I, I realized, too, when I came in, you guys came in, I didn't even, like, say who you guys were, which is my bad. Uh, that, <laughs> this, was, this was Mr. Failology, who was the team mentor, and Voodoo Dog, who's the team co-mentor, so the two experienced players here with us in the interview. So thank you guys for coming. And uh, thanks for, you know, your whole team for playing. It was a, it was a spectacle to watch. It was really fun. And also wanted to thank the viewers as well for hanging out with us. So we'll see you guys at the next match tonight, 7 p.m. PST. I did put the link to my Twitch stream in the chat. I will be streaming that match at that uh, location. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you guys there. GG. GG's. Have a good night. Have a good one.